once again to face the press and my name is Ebu Namota. In this edition of the program we are featuring a woman of substance and one of the pillars of the present administration, especially given the fact that the ministry she is controlling is a very vital one. But without much ado, let me introduce the Commissioner for Education, Professor Kate Omenoa, a professor of mass communication and an educationist. Professor, you're welcome to face the press. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with me to interview her, uh, my friends and colleague on my immediate left is Chuk Silozwe of the Independent Newspaper. Thank you very much and welcome. And next to him is Vin Ujumado of the Vanguard. You're welcome. Okay, madam, um, you've been in the saddle for some time and um, the administration which you, I mean the present administration, succeeded, performed creditably in this sector, I mean the education sector. And uh, this administration which Governor William Biano is in charge of, it says it is going to continue the good work of his predecessor. Um, what are the things that you consider outstanding that your administration has been able to achieve in the education sector in the past one year? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, let me say that we give a lot of credit to the past administration for you know setting up education on a very solid uh, ground and uh, just like you know this is the government of continuity too and uh, we have actually built on a lot of things you know that the previous administration has done um, number one let me say that the administration of Willow Kubiano is taking education from a very holistic perspective if you listen to His Excellency talk on education with passion, you will hear him talk about looking at infrastructure. Um, infrastructure does not just mean building, it also means the equipment, state of the art equipment in those infrastructure. Um, you will talk about um, pupils or students, their welfare, and then looking into what actually concerns them. You look at uh, the teachers, the welfare of the teachers. That's the perspectives in which we are taking education. And of course, we have a complete blueprint on education, which number one strategic objective is to ensure that the learning needs of all are met through equitable distribution of resources and ensure that we are one of the three top states with the lowest illiteracy rate. That's our strategic objective. And what it means that we have we are not leaving any sector of education they are behind. When we came, first came in, if you go to our um, special education centers where we have our physically challenged students, that was an area that was grossly neglected. Indeed, when Her Excellency Osodeme went there, she wept because it was in very dilapidated state. You wouldn't imagine that people were living there. That was one place we started. If you go to Isulo now, you will place there. We have the, the uh, you know, vision that we want to turn that place into a world-class special education center. You see, uh, we, we, we give them love. We give them in, you know, security. We, we give them a, a good subvention, which wasn't there before. And we have changed the face of that Isulo. And what we are doing now, before what used to happen was that um, students or students who finished primary six, they kept on repeating primary six because there was no secondary school there. Now we have a junior secondary school there. And yesterday I had a meeting with the post-primary school. We've sent a principal there and we're sending teachers there the next couple of weeks. You know, so what, what we want to do, I, I visited there not, more, not less than 10 times since I came in. And they said, always said that I was, uh, you know, this administration was, the, the first addition, giving them that sense of belonging. The other time I went there last week, they sang the national anthem in, with such passion. They sang the state anthem with such passion. They recited our shared values. 
the sang uh, this uh, state anthem in Hebrew, they we could see the passion, and they were saying they sang their own anthem, you know, their own school anthem, you know, say that we are showing them that they are happy that we are, they, are, we are, they are part of the society and that there is ability in disability. That is one very good thing we have achieved. So what we have now in mind, what I've been doing over the time is to to take our, some of our people who are actually philanthropists too, to go there and see whether they, they are able in any way, you know, to help because that place has undulated, uh, you know, landscaping. His Excellency has actually, you know, asked that landscaping be done for them. But we're also asking for people to also come and help us because it's a very massive area. So it will take the government a lot of money to do that. We are willing to do that, but we also need help to do that. So that's one area which actually shows you inclusiveness that we are running. And then again, if you come to our technical schools, that's another area that was neglected. 11 technical colleges in this state, and not one is accredited with NBTE, Nigerian Board of Technical Education. And so we have started the process of accrediting GTC on nature. His Excellency, during the last retreat, has given the Commissioner for Works the order that they will go and do palliative measure in that GTC, you know, so that uh, the erosion problem there and uh, some of the road that is bad that as we are going to the school will actually be taken care of because we are expecting people to come there and accredit ab about uh, nine courses there, including uh, vehicle bodybuilding maintenance. Okay, which is also a form of intelligent revenue for the school when it happens. In technical college, so we, are, we are also giving them, because that's one area that this administration is also interested in, vocational and technical education. Because we are hoping that this uh, education will be the, the springboard in which we are going to drive the four pillars of this administration. So that when we produce the human, you know, human resources, the manpower, if you know, with which to where you have the middle manpower, people like you know the uh, people who do plumbing, people who do tiling, people who do uh, carpentry, people who do a lot of things, you know, you will find out that these people will, will readily fall into the uh, the market. That's why we have gone into partnership with Innocent. Last year we signed a memorandum of understanding with Innocent Motors, and our students in the technical colleges now go to that. In our motors every day to learn vehicle body building maintenance. That's why we're setting up <coughs> work in GTC on it, which will be a source of revenue for the school so that they can also maintain the school with the money they can generate. That's one thing. And of course, you know that His Excellency now knows, knows uh, technical college, actually, uh, those in NTC 1 to 3 do not pay school fees anymore. That has been removed for them. And uh, the, all the fiscal challenge students in the, in the state you know, have free tuition. So we are looking at education comprehensively. And that is why for the technical college teachers, we have given them a lot of capacity building. Remember we are talking about welfare of teachers too, and welfare of students. So we've given them a lot of capacity building, both locally and internationally. Sometimes this yeah. Honorable Commissioner, it appeared that my first question to you was like, an open check. It's, it is really uh, an open check. And, and you, you want to write and go on. Yeah, I can go on. Because you asked what we, <laughs> yeah. we achieved. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. Yeah. Now, but before my colleagues come in, I, I want to know how far you've gone with the incentive you promised teachers who teach in rural areas. Mm -hmm. uh, because there was a policy that teachers should teach in their local government areas. Yeah. Are you sustaining it? We are sustaining Because that. we are aware that some people who mm. were initially sent to the rural areas walk their way back to the urban. Uh, well, no, no, but let me say that we have the policy that uh, teachers uh, should teach in their areas. But there are some areas that do not have enough people that will be teachers. And that becomes also problematic. So you need to send other people there. You see? Uh, but majorly, many people teach around the areas. You know, but we know that there is attrition of teachers in the rural areas, and what we have done is that we have uh, developed incentives for those teachers. Teachers who teach in areas that are designated hard to staff or hard to reach areas receive 20% of their basic salary in addition to their you know, salary. That's what we have done, and I think that has actually you know, boosted their morale because. Uh, some, I remember it, it, uh, somebody that brought somebody that said, I want this person to be a president. I said, are you a vice president? He said, no, I'm not. He said, why are you not a vice president? 
why didn't you go for the interview? Say, well, I was afraid that if I if I had gone for the interview, they would put me in a rural area. But I'm regretting it now because that takes extra money they are getting. <laughs> you know that he's missing that one. You know, so it's actually giving them some form of boost. So we give them twenty percent of their basic salary. In addition, teachers who teach uh, sciences and mathematics and English, His Excellency has added for 2015, Igbo teachers are receiving additional money, you know, to as incentive. Yeah. I think I believe that uh, this interview will help us to throw light a number of things, maybe that also worry teachers. We have talked about the, I think that's what the teachers call bush allowance for those who were posted to have to reach areas or rural areas. We received complaints that some of them who were earlier designated as, you know, being posted to rural areas have not earned that money. So I would like you to look into it. I don't know whether it is true or not, but some people, some of them told me that they have not earned that money and that some uh, you know, have earned it. So I don't know whether it is true or not. I'll hear it from you. What I can say is that people on their own call themselves rural areas. I'm from Nobi. Even though I've had delegation from people from teachers from Nobi, why is Nobi not a rural area? And I, I said, it can be a rural area. By the way, I read in the Independent or something, and they say it's, it's only when you know somebody that they, that you are giving the money. I think that's a fallacy. It is a fallacy, and, and I, I, honestly, I, I've always said that uh, it's uh, we shouldn't be able, just you know we shouldn't be able to just uh, write anything with one because we just want to write it. That's not true. This thing has a way. Just like I've told you about, I'm from Nobi, but the Nobi is not in, in rural area in any form. It's not because we're talking about hard to stop and hard to reach areas. Hard to start and hard to reach areas. That's what we're talking about. So Nobi is not that. Okay, it can be that. Do you understand that? So, uh, but people stay there and say it's a rural area. So it's not. We have our criteria, and we, we got them right. Hard to start or hard to reach areas. You see. So if you go to somewhere like Amich, Amich is in in there. You can call that. Go to uh, go for many them. Go to those areas. And one thing is about sustainability. If we begin to call every area rural area, how long do you think the government can sustain this? Paying all these teachers there. So we have to choose the ones that are. Actually, irrespective of the commissioner is from Nobi. Commissioner hasn't put Nobi there. So, so that thing in in, the, in independent was wrong. Well, it can't be. If we want to do it, I'll start from my town and, and give them. No, it's it's, it's it's we did it that on base criteria. So those who complain that they're in the rural, they're, 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 this is self-imposed rural area that they just call themselves rural. Area. We have our criteria. Those ones that are actually when when we went to Ibadan. As part of what we are doing to encourage teachers, I had to go to Ibodo. I went to Ibodo through a lap and then went through the river for 30, about 30 minutes on the boat. My PRO was there, some of the SAs went with me, you know, some of the, my staff we went there. And people are saying, some people are saying, ah, Commissioner, why? You are taking this job too far. Why are you going to go through the river? If, if you fall into that river, what do I do? I say, well, if, I'm, if we can send teachers there, we have to go and see them and know how they're doing. And that is the spirit of Biano is working in this state. He says, so and I went there and we engaged them. They were happy. They made some requests, which is excellent as approved. For example, we are we are giving them flying boat flying boat now, one of the boats that have been bought, so that it, it will ease them, you know, that is their transportation problems. You know that the government the government is building in Enzam Road, it's not yet connected to that area. So until it is, they have to be using that boat all the thing to, to cross. So I don't think I don't think any, any, you know, anybody was left out. You know, nobody was left out. I can assure you that. This controversial issue of the laptop in schools, mm -hmm. uh, because many of them actually, many teachers have been complaining mm -hmm. that though they have acquired their own laptops, government is insisting mm -hmm. that they get this one being uh, distributed by government at an exorbitant cost. Mm -hmm. Maybe this opportunity to clear the, 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 the whole thing, because um, some of them say uh, they are asked to pay 90,000 naira for a laptop that is, has market value of about 40,000. Mm -hmm. What's the situation? Well, we all know that there's no laptop that sells at 40,000. We all know that. Uh, so I, I, we don't want to be, to be, you know, and I'll show you that. 
um, and we have grades of laptop. Grades of laptop. We wouldn't want to give teachers laptop that after one year, and then a problem will come out. We, that's what I talk about, sustainability. We also wouldn't want to, uh, what we are giving the teachers is not just laptop, it's a package. It contains memory stick. It also has uh, some software. Sustainability. I can buy a laptop for 70,000, 60,000, give it to them, and then one year it's just out. Some people actually were telling me, uh -uh, at the level of teachers, that level of teachers, they need the small one. And I said, that's why you keep insulting teachers, because you don't know their worth. Which level? These are people that we are giving the future of our children. You should be able to give them something that has quality. It's a whole package. And by the way, let me say that this is not compulsory. It's a scheme we mapped out for those who voluntarily want to be part of the scheme. A lot, actually, even before we mapped that out, a lot of teachers have come to me, some principal, they had, you know, said, please give us this thing. The, the, the fact there were people who called my attention. I wasn't there when, that thing, when uh, the National Council on Education in 2012 brought out that policy that all state uh, Ministry of Education should procure an adequate number of laptops for all teachers on soft loan basis. And the NCE, National Council of Education, is the highest policy making body in education. The chair of that is always the Minister for Information. And of course, the State Minister will be there for education will be there. And all the commissioners, normally when you go to the NCE meeting, you have an umbra, you have all, you'll be designated where you stay. And if you are not there, it will be open. And so it's a, it's anybody, everybody. I've been to that NCE meeting uh, uh, you know, last year, and I, I could see the importance of that meeting. AUT is a member of the meeting. Option, uh, anchors, all the educational forestators, National uh, Nigeria Education Research Development Council, all of them. So, so it's a very huge meeting. And of course, uh, uh, maybe if, if we were going for this one, I'll take one journalist along, so they will have an idea feel of what I'm talking about. You see, so and if, if, so, so that the decision that is taken at, at NCE level is superior to any local anything you are doing, whether it is MUT or whatever. That decision says we will procure laptops for teachers on soft load basis and ensure adequate training for the teachers. I have the paper here in case you want to have a look at it. So, and that's the policy we are trying to drive. That's the policy we are trying to drive. I see. And that policy is policy that will be beneficial to us in the long run. Of course, I know that any change you want to make, you must have some resistance. But we have said it, that it's not compulsory for, if, you, if you're a teacher and you feel you have a, you have a laptop, good, good enough. Nobody is going to penalize you for not purchasing this one or not doing that. Nobody is going to penalize you. Where you will get into trouble is when you come for your promotion exam, and we give you a laptop to use and do, to do the right to edit it, and you fail. Nobody should blame us. Because we want to do this in such a way that every teacher keys in into that process. Even if you don't key into our own, important thing that you get computer literate. That's what they think. We have said that to take new teachers, the, any new teacher to take in. I'm saying this thing because I don't want somebody coming to beg me tomorrow. I say, you, know, you bring a, an, an analog teacher. And, they, and, and you begin to give me trouble. Every teacher must be computer literate, any new teacher. And those who are here, we've given them to January 2016 to get computer literate. If they don't, they won't get any promotion. They will not get any promotion until they And now, let me tell you, but the past administration, uh, administration bought vouchers plus other packages with Microsoft at one million US dollars. And this vouchers is for certification, Microsoft certification of teachers. And teachers have not used that. This is public fund. I think that is what the civil society even should be talking about. Not about the laptop or so. It's about, if that is what you should be talking about. Public funds being wasted because teachers have refused to go and use that vouchers. That is what we should be talking about. Honestly, one million US dollars. How else am I going to drive this to make sure that they use that voucher? 
except to make them get capital interest. And as part of that, by July, because it ought to have ended this month, July, I had to plead and plead with Microsoft. They extended it for another one year. And let me tell you, by July next year, any teacher that does not have the certification will have some disciplinary measure. Because you can't waste public funds like that. That's what we should be talking about. Not that uh, you are asking them to buy a laptop. One million US dollars. Nobody, by the time we check, less than 10% use. Teachers who are supposed to use them are not doing that. Are not doing that. I don't think it's fair on the society. I don't think it's fair at all. That's what we should be talking about. Learn how we can get teachers. I'm open to suggestion. Anybody who wa wants to tell me how I can make them use our one million US dollars, I'll be ready to listen to that. I've, we thought and thought about strategic plan, how we're going to do that. And that's why we started driving this thing very quickly. Because we are wasting our, our, our money. One million US dollars. That's what it is. And, they, and they, 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 they're part of it. They should be going for training and they should be taking the exam free of charge because government has already bought. It's a government of continuity. So are we going to throw away the voucher because they didn't come from our governor or didn't come from the present administration? I want you to tell whether it is fair that we throw away that. Teachers will just see they'll be doing one of the two when, the, when you know that JAM, JAM now is CBT, by next year, NECO will follow suit. And that we have promised to Mark Ponte and Umbra that we are going to give them education that is comparable to any in the world. It is only when we get teachers to key in into what we are doing, global competitiveness will come in. Even sometimes when they write for everything, they write hey, money, we want money. They can go into the net and source money and find that, uh, that there's a lot of funding for education, a lot of funding for self-improvement. No, 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 no. They, they don't want that. They just want to stay there and just count one, two, three. That's, I think education has gone beyond, beyond, you know, this kind of teaching. We want to have computer literate teachers. We want to have teachers who are no longer analog. We have to want to have teachers who are creative in what they are doing. We want to have teachers who can teach our children with competence and with knowledge. That's the only way we can sustain what Anambra has become over the years. Yeah, Honorable Commissioner, uh, you, you will agree with me that the Nigerian economy is hard. Yes. And that is, that apparently explains why some of the teachers are complaining. May we know how soft the soft loan you're offering them what, is? What we have offered, uh, the whole package is 90,000 Naira, but they pay over 18 months. 18 months. 18 months. 18 months. 5,000 a month. And let me say, teachers who are retiring, for example, who who may not have enough, uh, maybe they have only two years, and uh, you know they, they, I mean, I don't expect some people like that to even key in, because you don't have enough time, you know, to do the payment and stuff. People who already have laptops and feel that they don't want it, nobody force them to have another one. But you can only go to now so I am a Kalem mother. When we did that scheme at uh, Namda State University, in Ilochi, people thought he was crazy, but that was what made many of the teachers, many of our lecturers to key in. I had four laptops then, because I just came back from the UK where I did my studies. But I had to buy another one, and I gave them out to my children. My children are computer literate, you know? I gave it out to them. So, so oh yeah, before that, I can remember that. But if you don't want it, nobody's going to force you to do that. But if you can, you can give it out to your children or grandchildren or whatever, and use that if you already have one. And let me tell you on a lighter note, uh, a, 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 one man, a highly placed man, called me on this laptop issue to say congratulations. That the wife now, but tick 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 everywhere. I said, how come? I said, that he, had up to, he has up to five laptops, but this woman has refused to even touch it. Said, I just want to say, Prof, thank you. For this, that the woman is running about now, that he, she must have to keep. He said, No, she don't have, if you have five, give her one, so let her acquire her own with her own money so that she will learn. And you know, because I, I, I've been, I, I was teaching for a long time before I entered academics, so some of them are my friends. One of them, one of them sent me a test, and said, This man from Asubeb is forcing us to buy laptops. This man, that's what because this man is from Asubeb, you know. I didn't send it then in the night, I called her. And she said that she felt so ashamed because the husband 
So we came back and he told us, I said, I think you are very stupid. You don't know that this is a very good skill for you people. What do you think we are talking about? The husband told her, of her. I said, she first was ashamed of herself. And said it. I said, no, no, I called you because I wanted to explain to you what we are doing. And you know, But she quickly said she was going to convince others to put it in because the husband sat her down and told him how the benefits. So I, I received this in here and there. But what I always tell people, number one, it is not compulsory. And nobody will penalize you. Anybody who gives you a query, or if you feel you are being intimidated in any kind, let me know. But I assure you that that's not the spirit to which we are going. Number two, the only place you have problem is when we give you computer exam and you fail. You can, I can come and, I can, uh, in our community education resource center at uh, Obuno, we are now, uh, we have about 150 laptops, we are deploying there now, you know. So you can come, we can bring it out there, sit down. Put that part in. What do you think you are going to contribute to to education as a level 15 officer, for example? You go there and begin to write the thing on computer now. And at the end, we we'll give you time when you are going to send it to to the printer. If that time comes and you didn't send, we we'll just pick the ones that have sent and we we'll leave. So it starts. We are going to do PowerPoint training for them. We are going to do like uh, a word. You know, documents we are going to do Excel. Well, you know, this is a package which we are going to do for them to understand because they need Excel for their, you know, a results and everything. And now, when you ask any of them to do return, they take a, 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 a vehicle and begin to come to Oka. Give me the names of like now. Somebody sent me a text and said, I want to have the list of the best uh, students in in, in Neko. I was, I just wanted to my papa said, and what are you going to do? You are going to write an email and just send it. You don't need to go to Abuja to give it. Why must they come from anywhere to Oka? Because they want to send some documents when they can just do it on, on my email and send it to me. I receive some things from him by email. What I asked my PRO to draft for me, he has done that and sent it by email. I don't need to see him. That's the kind of thing we want them to be alive to. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think, Madam, the, I, I think that the next thing will be, like you said, the training program. Because any, even if somebody in the rural area, for instance, by acquires a laptop, but he doesn't have opportunity of practicing with it. Exactly. To, yes, you know. So the next line of action will be: Is there a training program? You, the ministry is will be organizing for them, or will they do the training themselves? Well, that's why, why I say course. that the laptop is a package, so, so package. Mm -hmm. including training. Right. Already we are doing like Microsoft is also helping us to do some training on Saturdays. And rotatory, you know, but nobody, they don't take them serious now. Because this money has been, tobacco has been paid by the past administration. And they are just lying fallow there. But now, I understand this, it has improved. More people are going because of this thing we have put. You see, more people are now going to for the training. Let me tell you, you know that too. Let's use when the job was there. How many people, how many people were actually throwing things, littering things? If people did a little bit of, you know, just push them a little, just a little bit of pushing for them to do the right thing. If you, I, we went to Singapore, we took some of our teachers to Singapore. In Singapore, you don't even chew gum in Singapore. You don't. That's how disciplined they are. And what is the result? They moved from a third world country by 1965 that they got their independence. By now, they're a first world country. I think journalists have to help us to shape public opinion about the right things we want for our society, especially where education is concerned. It is we are doing because if we do this thing that they will leave them where they are, then our children will not move. And we have very brilliant children, very brilliant children. Five of them now are going to Singapore on the 26th of this month to represent Nigeria. But what we are doing now is that by next year, we are, we are, it's very likely we are going to take some of about 10, 50 students, you know, to UK on summer, those of them who are doing well in school, because all the exams we are taking, I'm just keep filing them. I present that to his excellence, I'm sure he will agree, you know, to give them very good incentive so that we begin to mold the kind of children we want who have global competitiveness. I can hear Robert Jekaima all the time. They groom their people to become the best. Go to all the World Bank, all this, and all your people do everywhere. What do we do? We just stay and then we want to forget. Okay, Prof. He must, be, he must have been going around the schools. Yeah. And he must have seen the condition of all the laptops that were supplied by the previous administration. Mm -hmm. 
at that time, the complaint was that uh, many of them were, could not be put into use because of uh, lack of electricity or that uh, the, um, the principals could not properly keep the plants that were supplied to them as well. And again, there were not enough uh, IC teachers in those schools. What is the situation now? Uh, what I can tell you definitely is that uh, um, at least we have four, about 60% of our schools have ICT teachers. We probably need more. But I've told the principals to be very creative in what they do. You mustn't designate somebody IC teacher. There are young boys there we posted recently who may not be called IC teachers. They are in physics, they are in mathematics, but they are ICT compliant. Why can't you use those people? Why must you sit, fold your hands, and wait for government to post somebody designated an ICT teacher? I'm talking about creativity what you are doing. There are a lot of, some of the teachers, especially the young boys who were recently posted, who are very good in ICT. You can call them, ask them, you know, to become the ICT, you know, that you drive this ICT for us. While you know about funding situation, you know the government uh, uh, has increased uh, the, the size of teachers by 15%, even without their asking, since January this year, I think. And uh, we are maintaining payment of salaries at, at 25th of every month. We have to help government. That's one thing. I agree, there are some schools that don't have ICT teachers. But we can source ICT teachers from amongst ourselves. Some of us, especially the young people who were recently posted, who can help in ICT training. That is one. Secondly, when we came in, I, I did a presentation to ESCO members. I told them about the greatest challenge we have is security. Some of these laptops were stolen at some point. That made some of the teachers to begin to, you know, make use of one because they, they, they will be asked questions, you know. So I know that I'm aware of that. But we have done a lot to improve the security situation in our schools. Now we know we started because we are prioritizing. We started with our ten boarding, you know, girls' schools. We first did they put them uh, what do you call them uh, mesh, all those mesh wire something around that. If you go to uh, it's an academy on each other. You'll see that. If you go to uh, Anglican girls um, on each other, you'll, you'll see that. If you go to Ogidi girls, you'll see that. Go to um, Mata Mablis, you see that. Go to uh, Kali School or Zobo, you see that. Go to Arif, you see that. Go to Okititi girls. Go to Oga girls. Go to Ibuku girls. You know, we have we have faced those schools. That's part of security we are talking about. And uh, um, we have all, we're also working towards using what we call school marshals, you know, that will be the security outfit of the school. We're working out the details now and giving them training. Because we, need, we know that security is very top -notch. And when we did our last retreat, His Excellency has actually said that the MDG money that will come in will be used for the first of some schools to give them security. Even yesterday, I went around the schools with the Honorable Mention of our group. We went to uh, St. Charles, we went to DMGS, we went to Eastern Academy, we went to, uh, which other school did we go to? We went to about four or five schools. Uh, St. Charles, DMGS, uh, KROC, Eastern Academy. And he saw for himself, you know, the computer rooms are there, but the laptops are sometimes stacked by the side with a few being brought out for people who are currently using it. And the, the argument was that, you know, they don't, set the whole thing like that uh, because of security issues so that they put it that when they want to use it when they want to use it they have it they bring it out and use but we went to KROC they, they had some desktop and we said if maybe if the students had if they had the schools had desktops maybe it would have been better for them you know so the desk they, they had some desktops and they, we saw students they are using the laptops using the desktop there we went to Israel Academy they didn't know we were coming, but some students were using the laptops outside with the ICT teacher going around and stuff like that. And we were happy, you see. So uh, contrary to what people think, that principals simply pack the thing in their house. And uh, somebody said that probably their children will be using that. That wasn't the case at all. We're going to go to more schools today and see. Because his excess actually is concerned to know what they're doing. And so we're happy that they're actually using the laptops, even though you know, some of them are packed in that same ICT room, anyway. That's what we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. Masha, mm -hmm. you just mentioned it, and I, yeah. I remember that it, um, some time ago, almost one year now or so, mm -hmm. the community leaders were asked to nominate, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. 
And it's not uh, one year, but last year. Mm -hmm. Since then, we haven't heard anything about that. Mm -hmm. Now that you talked about it, can we also know what they will be used for and how you are preparing them? Or have they been employed? No, they have not been employed. But we have their names. We have all their names. We are, we are, uh, we are doing the logistics and the details because we are very careful about sustainability. We wouldn't want to send them out and suddenly find that we have no money to pay them anymore. So we are working out all the details. We are trying to see... I mean, there are 1,044 primary schools and 256 secondary schools. Take them for four each school like we want. Multiply that and you see the number. Multiply by the amount you see the number. Can government sustain it for a long time? So we are trying to prioritize, probably see how we can, you know, make it uh, be sustained. Uh, maybe we keep on scaling up or something. That's what we are doing. So we have, we have, we have had complaints of theft schools that, for example, do not have uh, walls, make it priority, for example. Because uh, if you have walls already, that's uh, some security for you. It might be easy. So that's the details that we're working about. I'll show you in the next couple of months. We'll be through the details and we're, we're working with SA security for their training and their uniform and they go to schools. Okay, uh, madam, you're, you're, there has been this rumor making the round that the state government wants to compel uh, boarding house system mm. in Anambra State. Mm. You've just talked about some schools not being well secured because of lack of fencing and security. Uh, how feasible is this idea of boarding school system as a compulsion for secondary schools in Anambra State? Um, again, choice of word. I don't know what is compelling that we can use at this point. But let me tell you, as soon as we get the things right, becomes a policy. But you need to get the environment right. And that's why we are doing, dealing with defensing and all those kind of things now. As soon as we know that we have them right, I'll tell you to be a policy. Because we know that in what we are doing now is that our uh, public mission schools, we have encouraged them. I think the word is encouragement. We have encouraged them to make them body schools. You see? Because we know that in, it's in body school that we learn every kind of good practice. How to eat, how to walk, how to talk, how to dance, how to study, how to know about rules and regulation, how to respect other people's things and a lot of things that you are taught in the you know, most of us are in the products of body system. And you, you I don't know how the policy that you really should be coming from home came about. But I, I don't think that policy did any good to us in the education system. Did it, did it. I don't think it did any good. Children, has, they have become like a dastical, you know. They, they don't have values about eating habits. They eat whatever they want and whatever they want. You know, they are lazy. Work. You know, it's changed a lot of things, you know. You, when you are in body school, five o'clock, you are up. You have charges to do. You have your prayers to say. You have, you know, everything is rules and regulation, you know. In some schools that are still, it's very strict. You can, they can even give you biscuits to eat in the hostel, and then you know to eat in the, in the refectory. And you take that biscuit to the hostel to eat, you get punishment for that. You see, discipline. And that's, you know, we keep lamenting, even the crop of teachers, and crop of doctors or nurses, crop of people, anybody, the youths, we keep lamenting how they're going to sustain the temple. Because you see that we are ideals and no longer their ideals. Because, you know, most times parents, you know, how long do even parents stay with their children? They're either in the market selling one thing or somewhere working till whatever they want to come back. So body system is good. That's one part we want to get clear. Uh, but we're working towards having, you know, body school. And we make it a policy. But we need to help and get the environment right. That's why we are calling on every person there is a policy we call adopt a school policy, which we borrow from OBA's person. Adopt a school policy. Myself, I call it visit a school policy. Go to a school near to your, your a primary school, a secondary school. Go there and see what you can do to help that school in that environment. With that has yielded some fruit. There are some people who are helping in one area or the other in the schools because they go there and they find out that there is this for improvement. So as soon as we get something, some of the things right, we'll make it a policy. But you won't want to send 
children to an unfenced area or you know leave them to this thing. That's why we are doing what we are doing. Today. I don't want you to leave this studio without you know saying something again about the laptop mm. controversy. Okay. I mean, in order to assuage the anxiety or fears mm. of teachers out there. We have said that this laptop is implementation of a policy that was, you know, uh, made at the National Council on Education in 2012. Number two, this laptop is not just laptop, it's a package containing training as well, as well as memory stick and other softwares that we give in the laptop. And it's a quality laptop. Three, it is not compulsory, even though it is desirable, but it is not compulsory that everybody will key in into this scheme. If you are retiring and you can't key in, if you have laptops and you can't key in, we will understand that and nobody, I repeat, nobody will get any kind of sanction for not doing that. The only issue I will have with anybody <laughs> is that if you are not computer literate by January 2016, you'll be surprised that no promotion will come to you because every exam or anything we are giving for any promotion must be computer based. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner, for participating in this program. Um, it's been nice having you, you. and uh, I can assure you that we will give you more opportunities in the future to feature on Face the Press. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also give my thanks to my friends and colleagues, Chooks. Thank you. And good night. Vin. Good night. Once again, I say thank you and good night.